Alison and Georgia Moffat are here a little bit later. But first, she was the feisty runner-up from last year's The Apprentice. But now, Ruth Badger is set to go head-to-head -head with her old mentor in a rival show, appropriately entitled Badger or Bust. And it seems that, like Sir Alan, she's not prepared to take prisoners. Today, things change. Ruth's rules. I'm now going to tell you what's going to happen. There's certain things that are going wrong with this business that I'm going to put right. And it starts, number one, with staff. We've been doing undercover calling, and I can tell you that I've been in a lot of companies, and your calls are some of the worst that I've heard. No way, shape or form, at any point, did anybody in the room build that dream. Never, ever did you say, oh, your best friend's getting married, fantastic. Where do you want to go? Don't worry, we're going to give you the weekend of your life. I don't want to speak to a plank of wood who's got no personality. That told him. Wow, well done, Ruth. Now, this is called Badger or Bust. It yes. starts next Tuesday on Sky One, At 9 o'clock. It's 10 o'clock. Oh, 10 o'clock. Oh, yes. Oh, I'll make a note there, 10 o'clock. <laughs> there we go. But congratulations. How fantastic to get your own show. Well, it sounds better than it is because it was a lot of hard work. And to go into six different businesses that were all different. I mean, the show's called Badger or Bust, but it's not just companies that are going out of business. Mm. It's even worse than that. It's companies that are not utilising all their skills and actually losing money where they could be making a fortune. Mm. So I dealt with politics, I dealt with attitudes, I dealt with all male companies who actually said that their sales expert, because they didn't know who was going into the business, he had better be more experienced than them and have more sort of sales training than they'd ever had. So when I turned up and I was probably 20 years younger than them and obviously a woman, they had one hell of a shock. I bet they did. Wasn't there one called Chris in the yes. conservatory doors and windows <laughs> business? Yeah, he was. Um, there's, there's one clip in the show where he drives off because he's going on holiday and he says the nightmare's over and then when I turn up on his last day he gets a bit of a shock. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really rewarding experience and for me it was great because I think the, the apprentice showed me as the saleswoman. Mm -hmm. Badger or Bust does actually demonstrate the business sort of ability that I've so got. So how, how easy, when you look at a company like that, yeah. uh, how easy is it making a few tweaks here and there to turn, turn it round? Well, to be honest, business is, for me, business is very, very simple because I take the opposite approach to most people. I'm not interested in the paper and the figures as such. I'm interested in what's actually done. Now, the doers and the thinkers are completely different. And the majority of these businesses, people talk a lot, but they don't actually do a lot. So what I do is I go in and I ask the same question for about 10 people. And every single one of them gives a different answer. And the scary thing was the MDs of these companies then didn't have the finger on the pulse. They didn't know what was going on. So I went in there and basically got right down with the core staff, found out what was going on, highlighted really three problems that I could address. Because don't forget, I've only got eight days. Mm. You know, some of these businesses owed 300 grand and they've got to pay them back within six weeks. Otherwise, they'd go bust. Did you and turn some of those things around? I did, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, not every business can be saved. Mm. You know, I'm not superwoman, but what I do is I go in there and I increase. I mean, one company doubled the profits in two months. Another company tripled their sales by 47%. And I didn't go in there with a the magic wand. I didn't do the selling for them. I showed them how to do it. Well, you have a very successful consultancy company, so what's your five-year plan? My five-year plan, realistically for me, is I take every single year as it comes. I focus on improving productivity and profitability, but ultimately, for me, it's happiness. And I know that may sound really cheesy. And serious amounts of money. Yes. Financial stability for me and my family. I mean, my mum and my nan are actually watching at the moment. They're not very well. And I promised my mum yesterday that I'll pay your mortgage off. And do you know what? That is something for my family to have the peace of mind that, you know, they'll never have to worry. I'll work every hour mm. because that gives me sort of... The happiness that I've got. So really, my private life and what goes on there is as important as my business life. Yeah, that that's very very good. And I love the way you say that for you, business is simple. That you can see straight away where the mistakes mm. are made. And there's too much of this. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. When we watch The Apprentice, I'm sure you're watching this this new series as well. Yeah. They're all busy doing all this company yeah. nonsense speak, and you think, stop it, talk normally, which Sir Alan is very good at. But he that's just why he's cuts it. If you actually look, I mean, I left school with three GCSEs, and it's never stopped me, but the difference between me and some of the business people, not all of them, is the fact that while they're talking and everybody can sort of be hypothetical, we can all say this may happen and that may happen, we'll actually go out and do it because I've learned through life that it's the decisions you don't make that you regret, not the ones you do. Exactly. Because my parents said to me when I was very young, if you make decisions and they go well, 
Mm. You get the benefit. If they go wrong, you learn. And business is about that. But I think an entrepreneur will actually make those risks. And the good things, I mean, I'm very, very for small companies in this country because I don't actually think anybody really focuses on them. And that's what my business does. Small, medium enterprises where they're not turning over 20 million for me, at the heart of Britain, you know, it's the heart of Britain. What do you What do you think about the the current series of uh, the Apprentice? Well, it's you think a train. Well, it's interesting because somebody um, interviewed me yesterday morning and took everything out of context with him. What Trey actually says is very good. If you listen to him, the content of what he's saying is good. Sometimes the way that he puts it across is for me too aggressive. I don't swear he does. But the one thing I would actually say is this time last year, I was suffering like the apprentices are this year. So, you know, when people say I don't like him, people shouldn't take it personally. It's just the fact that the way they're being portrayed on television is mm. not what they like. I mean, I'm not as aggressive as everybody makes out. My God, I'm assertive. And in business, I know what I want and I go for it. But I'm certainly not aggressive and in your face. It's not the way that I am. Do you still keep in contact with Sir Alan? Um, yes, I text Sir Alan yesterday. Did you? Yeah, on the train on the way down. Yes. Sending him a little bit of help and Why? information. Why? Why did I text him? Because yes. somebody interviewed me and they took everything out of context. Oh, I was just I like, oh, and he actually said, Ruth, you should know better by now. And I went, I oh, know, I know, I'm sorry. But, you know, Sir Alan said to me that if I ever needed anything, he'd always be there. And to be fair, he's always been very supportive of me. I love The Apprentice. He is absolutely hilarious. And what he does is he speaks very, very clearly. Mm. And he just points out the obvious, and yeah, again, that's what you need to do. Well, he's not going to help you today. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. She may have survived Sir Alan Sugar, but Ruth Badger is about to take on her biggest challenge yet, we think. It's time to play Beat the Stylist. Come over Come here. On. So you are...